Hi everyone, this is Neil Reitertier, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. This is of a patient who was suffering from a fungal ear infection. You could see some uh, woolly strands there called hyphae. So we already know by uh, the presence of that hyphae and woolly strand appearance that they've got, they had um, and still have um, aspilogis. And there's different strains of aspilogis, but it's um, a strain of fungi that are actually native to the ear, believe it or not but they only become pathogenic when the condition of the ear changes. Um, not so much acidity in the ear. So with bacteria, they're more governed by uh, acidity. So if our ears are mildly acidic, but if the acidity in the ear is increased and it becomes more neutral, some of the bacteria in the ear, they're called neutrophiles. So they're at their optimal growth when the pH is more neutral. Some of the bacteria can become pathogenic, but it also allows non-native bacteria to invade the ear and colonize because it gives them the optimal pH breeding uh, environment. Fungi, it's less so the acidity, but it's warmth and moisture. So when you've got excessive warmth and moisture in the ear, it allows some of these native fungi like Aspilogis, and you've got Aspilogis niger and flavis to become pathogenic. Now, they had been using some uh, antifungal solution in the ear, which had crystallized the skin and it's very not very often where the hand uh, the hair on the back of my neck uh, stands up uh, but here it did and you can see probably why it's the way the skin is crystallized it's kind of almost like you know in in the shower you get the slip proof mats where you get these bubbles on the mat uh, on underneath the suction cups and they attach to the underside of the bath and you know, when you come to clean it, you can see these indentations or marks on the base of the bath, for example. It, even now watching it, and I, I think the technical, it says goosebumps, but I just did a bit more research about it at the time. I think it's called a pilot erection. So when things like this, um, I think it stimulates the sympathetic uh, nervous system and it it causes the erector muscles which attach to the hair follicles to contract and that's what makes the hair stand up and even watching this back it, it's almost giving me shivers um, and it's just the appearance when I've seen blood in the ear infection but this actually had more of an impact especially at the time of performing the procedure so I'd be interested to know whether you guys got that same reaction as I did whilst watching this um, crystallized dead skin peel so because there is still some um, Aspilogis present on this crystallized skin. I have just written back to the GP so they can get prescribed some more medication. But because it's on the surface of the skin, it may be that just by removing this, their symptoms and the, the fungi infection will resolve. So I've peeled a lot of it. It's quite a thick blanket. They had it a narrow entrance of the ear, which is, makes it a bit difficult when you use forceps. But I'm just trying to get some purchase. And the forceps did come good in the end. It's just getting that grip on the underneath side. I don't want to introduce any drops in here to soften this skin because um, some fungi um, strains can feed off the olive oil and exponentially grow, so we want to avoid that. So I want to try and do this completely uh, using dry instruments. So I'm just going to go back to the suction here. Just Sometimes we, there, I just wanted to see if I can lift it off the canal wall a little bit uh, and then go in with the forceps. So. I think I do that. I think I do go back in with the forceps. Sometimes you just have to position the skin away from the canal so you can glide the forceps in. So whenever we, you see a video, guys, um, it's not just the ear canal. So if this was um, uh, an ear model, so what, uh, what I use in my training course, an ear, uh, a mannequin, we can be quite aggressive to remove it because we're not going to cause any pain. So, But when you've got a, a live patient there, um, my number one priority is to minimise any discomfort that we can cause so some of the things that are possible with a, a model ear it's not possible with a real ear because it can cause um, as I said a bit of uh, pain and discomfort um, I don't think I had my new right correct this is a bit of an older historic uh, video I think the patient attended in uh, early November so I'm not sure if I had my right correct at the time but I probably wouldn't have used it anyway because some of the skin is on the bony part and the suction is working pretty well at the moment. Just 
peel this down. It's quite adhesive, um, this crystallized skin. So the skin probably was probably wasn't as thick as this, uh, probably a bit more damp skin at the time of the infection, but the antifungal solution kind of almost crystallite dries up the skin and it really attaches itself to the canal. And, and I suspect that crystallization process has caused the skin to crumple at certain points and those crimple points, the elevated raised bits, uh, then make contact with the canal wall, which uh, you probably get a bit of humidity in between the skin layer and the canal wall, which makes the skin slightly macerated then, and you get those indentations. And they're quite spaced apart, it's almost geometrically symmetrical, some of these indentations on the canal wall. And you'll see it in a minute when I really peel this away. You can see they're evenly, almost evenly spaced apart. And that's the beauty of um, our human body. Is, um, so obviously the crystallization of the skin has caused the skin at very equal intervals to crimple. Um, there's, and you can probably search this on YouTube. So if you play certain frequencies of, of sound and on top of that speaker, you put um, some sort of dish or tray and you put um, sand, for example, different frequencies of sound will cause these grains of sand to position them in a certain geometrical pattern. It's very fascinating. Um, it's almost like snowflakes. They're very, they're, I think, if I'm correct in believing it, snowflakes, are, each one is like a fingerprint, the individual, but they're symmetrical. So it's amazing how um, nature can provide us with all these patterns. And I mean, I'm not going to compare this to a snowflake or that sound experiment when you get these beautiful... Uh, patterns created by sound waves and by adjusting the sand um, in response to the sound. But, I mean, the human body is, is, is very fascinating and quite marvellous at the same time. So I managed to get the forceps underneath. I'm lifting it up and away. The ear canal narrows here a little bit. You can see that bottom jaw is quite close to that front wall of the canal. I think with the wax scope, it, because the wax scope stretches the ear open, it allows more freedom with the instrument. The instrument will probably come in from a straighter angle. Even though I'm stretching the ear canal here with the endoscope, the endoscope still has to come in from a slight angle. Um, so from the top right down to the center, and then it has to, the forceps, you have to reposition it back to the right again, because the ear canal straightens that way. But the eardrum is nice and healthy, but that, yeah, you can see that skin, it's, it's, it's macerating underneath. It's just that sweat and humidity, I suspect. Um, so just written back to the GP, I think they would benefit from another course of the antifungal solution drops and the patient knows to avoid olive oil and avoid water. Since both of these um, can uh, exacerbate a fungal infection. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.